in high definition. Famous people with fading voices. Julie Andrews, Neil Young, Cher, they all come to see the man with the laser. So you can take people and give them their voice back in two hours. Good evening, Dr. Steven Zeitels is no rock star. But for people who sing for a living, he is bigger than the Beatles and Beyonce combined. Steven Tyler is indeed back, in part because he's seen the light of Steven Zeitel's laser. I spend a lot of my time repairing performers um, and treating the lumps and bumps from vocal overuse that they get. Superstars are among Dr. Zeitel's biggest fans. Julie Andrews, Neil Young, Cher, Sarah Brightman, even Ozzy Osbourne have come to him for help. But anyone can have problems with their vocal cords. Be it as an educator, clergy, folks in the military, broadcasters. <laughs> Zeitel's secret weapon is a special pulsing laser that removes unwanted lesions and nodules from the vocal cords without injuring healthy tissue. So you can take people who oh, have been like this for years and give them their voice back in two hours. When Steven Tyler came to see Zytel's, he was, quite literally, suffering for his art. And Steven simply was, he bled. Turns out, Tyler's bleeding was due to an abnormal blood vessel. And using, again, the same class of lasers, were able to involute or shrink the vessel without affecting the pliability of his vocal cords at all. And this had never been done before. All the techniques either cut the tissue to get the vessel or burned it. Now, Zytels has set his sights on an even bigger challenge, cancer. A year ago, Sefi Rivlin, one of Israel's most famous performers, was diagnosed with cancer of the vocal cords. Traditional therapies, surgeries, and radiation would have permanently altered his voice. For me, in my prof profession, it's like a death penalty. Luckily, he found Dr. Zytel's and his pioneering cancer treatment at Mass General. Again, with this kind of novel management, the voice can be preserved, and we already know that endoscopic treatment, no incisions, um, you can actually just be having you know, lunch or dinner that day, is a 95 to 98 percent cure rate. As if rescuing injured voices and battling cancer weren't enough, Dr. Zytels is also going back to the basics, trying to learn just how vocal cords make sound in the first place. Supported by funding from the Institute of Laryngology and Voice Restoration, he and colleague Robert Hillman are using ultra-high-speed cameras to break down the mechanics of the human voice. You can see it's ultra-slow motion. This exam was done at 6,000 frames a second. So this lets us look at the true vibration uh, of the vocal cords. The hope is that this research will help Zytel's develop biomaterials that could someday replace damaged tissue. Practiced performers might then become super singers. It would be the equivalent if you were a world-class pole vaulter and someone just decided in that area of the earth to have diminished gravity. But such yeah. ambitions will have to wait. Okay. For now, curing cancer yeah. will just have to do. This. Uh, we did a lot in this month. Yes, we, we accomplished yeah. a great deal this month. Because at this point, I see no evidence of cancer. Okay. A lot of it will be determined by what grows in the period of time. It will be fantastic. I am very pleased. I am very pleased too. Thank you very much. It's important to note that uh, throat cancer comes with sort of a built-in early warning system, which is hoarseness. And nowhere else in the body will a small lesion create, a small cancerous lesion, create a symptom so quickly. So if you are hoarse for more than two weeks, don't panic. But you might want to get that checked out by a doctor. And Dr. Zytel says he believes that in the future, people should have a regular throat screening, just like they do right now for uh, you know, colon cancer or those sorts of things. It makes sense. It really does.